Hey guys, today we're going to solo the Sagn, the Fallen Oracle, one of the most intense solos I performed. If you want to see the full fight, check the description for link. I had three things in mind that would make the solo unable to be done. First, it is a stacking ability in a few strikes, which at one point will become too much to heal. Then it is also the add spawns, which will happen faster than you can kill them off. And lastly, what about the Berserk? A 910 damage boost on the boss would make us fail horribly. During early testing on the encounter area, trying to find bug pathing, I noticed that the adds are surprisingly slow. Also, they will only cast their damaging ability when they are within 8 yards of you, not 20 like the tooltip says. So perhaps we can beat the boss by kiting. Another amazing thing is that by kiting, the infused strikes will have time to drop off. So we have found a way to overcome two obstacles, but Berserk is still a thing, as well as staggering barrage dealing massive damage that is usually soaked in groups. And how are we obtaining enough movement speed as paladins? For the movement speed, we are stacking up bad eye level crafted gear, 233 to be exact, with the optional regent to pure air sail extensions. This one stacks no matter how many pieces you have, so I got neck, ring, as well as a cloak, and ended up with 130% movement speed. But I had issues even when I could outrun the ads. You see, the more speed I have, the more towards the center of the room I can run, without being caught up by the ads. But the less speed I have, the more I got to hug the edge. And well, her staggering barrage will knock me back, leading to me falling off. But without enough speed, running close to the center of the room, will the ads catch up, and one-shot me. I tried a lot of different things to optimize my movement speed. Every single Covenant Soulbind had something that made him unreliable. Could range from uptime, in the case of Nia, to having too short range in order to activate, which was the case with Emeni. I even spent thousands of gold to obtain a golden hair, which would have been perfect. Well, perfect if it actually worked. After obtaining it, I didn't get any movement speed at all, so it must have been stealth changed at the same time as Runeblade of Baron Riven there. Thanks, Bliss. I tried using Uther's Devotion to reduce the cooldown on Head of Freedom, which will lead to 100% uptime on the Echoing Blessings, but losing Magistrate Judgment would weaken my survival too much. You see, this boss doesn't have the usual type of Berserk, thankfully. It is instead making her gain mana very, very quickly, will lead to me being bombarded with Disintegration Halo, the ability which typically wipes a raid. As a tank, we can survive mechanics that kills weaker members of the raid group, such as DBS or healers. Destructive Cola! Right, help! Stop moving then! <laughs> oh my god. But her type of Berserk also speeds up the Staggering Barrage cast to about once every 30 seconds. Both of those mechanics make me take a huge amount of damage, and are the reasons I can't go easy on my survival. The knockback from the Barrage also drove me mad, because sometimes it didn't happen. If I could figure out a way to avoid it, I would manage the boss with way less movement speed, since I didn't have to be afraid of running on the edge. Then I could instead gear for more survival. I tested if the knockback was based on blocking, absorbs, positioning, or something else. I'm not certain, but I assume it had to be because of the massive amount of encroaching dominion spawned by the ads. Every time I managed to avoid the knockback, it was when I was running in the AoE. So perhaps there are so many different effects happening at once, so the knockback will be ignored by the server. I really want to test the punch card Electromagnetic Resistor to reduce the knockback, but sadly, it didn't drop. Ultimately, I went with 150 eye level gear set, and had to buy a complete new unit legendary in order to put minor speed enchants on my low level boots. This would push my passive run speed to under 38%. Which was just enough. 
This boss might be worse than Shriek Wing, because there I had to mainly focus on my own movement. But in this encounter, I have to keep track of all the adds so I don't get too close, as well as my own positioning to not be knocked out, and having to rotate cooldowns correctly for each staggering barrage. The boss battle takes more than an hour, and requires constant focus without a single second of break. I ultimately had about 20 wipes, most happening 20 or 30 minutes into the fight. My HPS was about 12k. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more.